Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We have finished doing almost all the problems from this book. If there is any problem at all that gives you trouble, you can find the solution to that problem from day number 251 through 400. From 251 through 400. This book happens to contain almost all the same problem and in vast majority of the cases on exactly the same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We are finished doing all the problems from this book. In the event that you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. The original solutions tend to be a little lengthier and they tend to be a little bit in depth. Right now we are in the process of solving some quantitative comparison questions from this book right here, the 10th edition of the general GRE. Quantitative comparison questions are very important questions. They are still very big part, very big chunk of the exam. Unfortunately, the newer books, the revised GRE books, do not provide us enough practice questions. So to get some more practice on the quantitative comparison questions, from day number 401, we have been doing problems from this book here, and right now we are on page number 200. And 65. Please turn to it. Page number 265. Problem number 4. The problem is already on the blackboard. Here's what it says. Problem number 4, when it was given in the exam, 76% of the people had no trouble with it. 3 quarters of the people had no trouble with this question at all. It's a geometry question. Here's what we are told. We have four lines. Line MN, we are told, is parallel to PQ. Line MN is, par M -M -N is parallel to PQ. And we are told the line PR is parallel to ST. We are told that this is x degrees, this is y degrees. We are told that this angle right here is 55 and this angle is 40 degrees. What we are being asked to compare are these two quantities, y minus x, here's our y, here's our x, the difference between these two angles versus 15. I'll be quiet now, I'll give you two seconds, five seconds actually, to pause and unpause the video. I want you to pause the video, solve the problem yourself and once you have solved it, then compare your work against the work that we're about to do together. Do you understand? Always do that in every single problem. Here we go. Okay, here's what's going on. Since we know that line MN is parallel to PQ, and we also know that this angle is 40. If this angle is 40, then this inside angle, this inside angle will also have to be 40. So there you go. Now we know that this angle is 40. We are told that this angle is 55. We can figure out the x. x would have to be 180 minus, because this is a straight line, which means 40 plus 55 plus x has to be 180. 40 plus 55. 40 plus 55 plus x plus x here has to equal 180. We can figure out the x. 40 plus 55 is, or oh better yet, let's just subtract 40 from both sides, so it becomes 140, and then subtract 55 from both sides, and there is our x. x equals 140 minus 55, uh, that will be 5, and then 13 minus 5 is 85. There we go. Or oh better yet, 140 minus 50, 140 minus 50 should have been 90, Therefore, 140 minus 55 is 85. I prefer to do it that way because I, there's a chance that you make, when you make it too mechanical, there's a chance that you might make a, mis make a mistake. Just think about it. 140 minus 50, if you had to ask, uh, if, you had, if you were asked, that would have to be 90. Therefore, 140 minus 55 would have to be 5 less than that, 85. So that's that. That's your x. So right here, we can put the x here. That's x. This, this we just found out is 85. If x is 85, then this angle is also x. This angle is also x, which, also, which will also have to be 85. And now, y plus x has to be 180, because it's a straight line. y plus x has to equal 180. x, we just found out, is 85, which means y is equal to 180 minus 85. 180 minus 85. Again, 100, 100, 180, 180 minus 80 would have been exactly 100. 
Therefore, 100 minus 85 will be 5 less than 100 is 95. Y is equal to 95. That's it. We subtract, we're subtracting x from both sides. You understand? x is equal to 85. You see, that's what we're doing here. We're subtracting x from here and x from here. We're subtracting x from this side. It drops out. And x is 85, which is what we're writing here. And therefore, y equals 180 minus 85, which is 95. That's it. We're done. So y is 95. x, we found out, is 85. 95 minus 85 is 10, which is less than 15. The answer is, the answer is b. Let's move on to the next one, number five. Question number five. Question number five is another straightforward question. How do we know it's a straightforward question? Because I'm going to give you the percentile. I'm going to tell you exactly how people performed on it. Three quarters of the people, three quarters of the people had no trouble with it. If three quarters of the people who took the exam had no trouble with it, it must have been a straightforward question. We are told that three quarter minus y, three quarter y rather, three quarter y minus five equals seven. Equals seven. And what we are being asked to compare, What we're being asked to compare is column A, Y versus column B, 15. That's it. Y versus 15. Pause the video, do it yourself. Y versus 15. I'll give you five seconds to unpause and pause the video and do it yourself. Okay, here we go. Let's add five to both sides. Let's add 5 to both sides, the 5 drops out, and we end up with 3 quarter y, 3 quarter y, 3 quarters of y equals 7 plus 5, which is 12. Now we have to get rid of the 4 from this side, so let's, let's multiply both sides by 4. Multiply this side of the equation by 4, and multiply that side of the equation by 4. And the 4 drops out, we end up with 3 times y, 3y, we know now, equals 12 times 4. We need the y by itself, so let's divide both sides of the equation by 3. Let's divide both sides of the equation by 3 and the 3 drops out and we're done with, we're done. Y by itself, that's what we wanted. We wanted to isolate the Y. We have, we have done so. 12 divided by 3, let's divide top and bottom by 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4, so we have 4 times 4. Y is 4 times 4, which is more than 15. The answer is A. 4 times 4 is 16, which is more than 15. Number 6. Question number 6. Question number six is the percentage problem. We have been asked to calculate. Question number six is the percentage problem. Seven tenths of the people have no trouble with it. We are asked to we are being asked to compare ninety percent of thirty versus thirteen point five percent of two hundred. Again, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to get out of your way, pause the video right now, solve it yourself. There we go. The idea is to do these questions without a calculator. Do you understand? If once in a while we come across a problem that actually calls for the calculator, I will tell you. I will tell you that this question is going to take too long to do it by hand and you have my blessings to pick up the calculator. Until I tell you that, until I tell you so, leave the bloody thing alone. Do you understand? Save the calculator for the rainy day. 90% of 30. Well, we know, we know 10% of 30. How much is 10% of 30? 10% of 30 is 3. If 10% of 30 is 3, then 90% which is 100%, which is 30 is 100%, therefore, therefore, therefore 90% of 30 would have to be the 100%, 
minus the 10%, which is 27. It's 30 minus 3, which is 27. So that's what we have in the first column. How do we figure out 13.5% of 200? Again, there are smart ways of doing this thing. There are more economical ways of, of doing this thing. And there are mechanical, academic, nerdy way of doing this thing. Don't, don't try to figure out 13% of 200 like that. Ask yourself, how much is 13%, 13.5% rather, how much is 13.5% of 100? 13 and a half percent of 100, I, I, I left no room here, I took so much room here, I, should, I was not, let's do it in the bottom here, 13.5 percent of 100 is how much? Can you tell me? Well, 13 and a half percent of 100, uh, 7 percent of 100 is 7, 8 percent of 100 is 8, 6 percent of 100 is 6, 37.5 percent of 100 is 37.5 percent, therefore 13 and a half percent of 100 is 13 and a half. I'm making it, I'm, I'm being too silly. Obviously, it's, we don't have 100, we have 200. So multiply the damn thing by 2. Multiply this quantity by 2 and multiply this quantity by 2. That's it, we're done. So 13 and a half percent of 200 would have to be twice as much. How much is 2 times 13 and a half? Again, don't try to figure out 13.5 13, 13 times 2. Don't try to figure that out. I was here like that. Ask yourself, what, it, what is double of 13? Double of 13 is 26. 13 times 2 is 26, and then half and a half is another one, so it's 27. Here we have 27, here we have 27, the answer is C. The answer is C. It is just as well that we finish because I'm, about, I'm losing my voice. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Why not? <clears throat>